performing since you were eight years old. It's not that often that kids can guess that young what they'll be doing later on in life. How did you recognize that this was it and that it would be part of your true self? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know how I got into it, but I think that just right off the bat, it just felt right. Um, you know, I knew my sister was doing it and I wanted to do it because they were. And then when I did it, it was like the most fun thing in the world. And again, it just felt right. And then I really did not see that being like my path, especially like when I hit, hit puberty and like my voice started changing, I was like, got super insecure about everything. And I just thought there's no point. It's not my thing, whatever. Um, and then uh, like randomly when I was 16, my sister's friend from uh, college messaged me and like had me come up to LA and she was super encouraging. And I was kind of like, huh, maybe this could be a thing. And from that moment on is when I started pursuing it and whatnot. But I didn't really think of that as something that even was a possibility for myself uh, until somebody else was sort of like, hey, you should keep doing this. And then um, the rest is what happened. Next question. Uh, considering that you started at such an early age, I'm sure you had fun growing next to so many creative minds. Do you have someone along the path that has truly left a lasting mark and helped shape your identity? Hmm. Yeah, there's, there's lots of people um, that I've met throughout the way that have really taught me and um, who have mentored me a lot. Um, a huge one for me is Tim Federley, the showrunner for um, High School Musical, the musical, the series. He is like he's the best boss in the world. He's such a hard worker and such a brilliant and caring guy. Like he's the kind of person who, you know, when we had a shutdown, um, he would call every single cast member every single day to check in with them and like make sure everyone's okay and is constantly thinking about everybody else as well and it's just like he's always somebody I can go to for sound advice and, and he's a good like north star whenever I'm sort of unsure of where I am or what to do next. The fact that you were homeschooled clearly shows how much your parents were supportive of you and your way of perceiving your life and future. Is there any particular memory from that surrounding a shared moment that you really treasure to this day? Hmm. I think I, I, I think I have so many special memories with my siblings because we were all homeschooled and we ended up doing stuff together all the time and I think the cool thing about it is that you could sort of create your own uh, you, you had, like, it was basically just like a playground of creativity where you know we could finish school early in the day so that we could all go write and like film a short film together or like you know just just run around and make up silly songs all day long or or any stuff like that so I feel like uh, I can't think of a specific one at the moment, but I think that that was just a uh, normal thing in my household. It was like a really creative space and, and everybody just like kind of doing what they loved and doing what they wanted to do all day long. Amazing. I mean, that kind of translates into the next question. So it says your, your undeniable artistic versatility is one of your strongest suits. Do you feel that your passions would flourish the same way had you not been brought up under the theater influence of your parents and siblings? Mm. Yeah, I don't, I can't say, like, I have no idea if, if in an alternate reality had I gone to public school, like, if I had been, I probably would have been a totally different person, but I think a, a large reason why it, it helped is because when you're homeschooled, especially with so many siblings, it's all self-taught, like, you have to really learn everything for yourself, and you have to sort of, uh, you know, seek that out and, and learn how to rely on yourself for that stuff, and so... That sort of nature of learning that I, I grew up with is, I think, what helped me when it came to learning how to play the ukulele or the guitar or the piano or acting or any of that. It's like sort of having to just rely on yourself and, uh, and teach yourself, I think, has, has been a huge um, factor in, like, everything else in my life. Perfect. So you have five sisters growing up surrounded by six women in total. How have these women played a role in your life and influenced your acting process? Do you find yourself channeling some of that energy when on set? Mm. Yeah, I think I didn't realize how much like the feminine energy in my life affected me just because it was so normal until I was like out of the house and I realized that not everybody had that growing up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that they say you're, everybody is like their five closest friends and considering that I grew up homeschooled with five sisters I would say that I am the sum total of my, my five sisters in different ways like each of them is a little part of me um, so yeah in a way I, I am uh, you know channeling that when I am acting just because I think you know that, that shaped who I am um, and uh, and yeah um, as a 20 year old you've already performed in over 30 musicals and started some notorious and established series giving life to an array of very different roles 
Was this level of dynamic versatility and eclecticism intentional and planned ahead, or did it come naturally and along the way? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think it was just I, I just haven't thought too much about it. I think that's pretty natural for me to like be wanting to like do a bunch of different things and constantly be staying busy and trying and learning new things. Um, so I don't know, that was never really like the plan. I just started doing musical theater and then I loved it and then I was doing multiple shows a year and then it was like once I got old enough I was working at Legoland and I was also teaching musical theater for kids at school and then I was also like, you know, uh, mentoring with this other videographer guy that I knew and, and he was teaching me a bunch of stuff and so I guess that's just so always kind of been in my, my nature to like be doing and trying a bunch of different things. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know really where that came from but... Is what it is. Uh, so TV-wise, you started in Grey's Anatomy, playing arguably your darkest and most dramatic character to date as an incongruable drug addict, then followed by High School Musical, the musical, hmm. the series in the same year. Uh, how did you rewire yourself to bridge the gap between such polarized roles? Hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't really know. It was just like, Grey's Anatomy was so fun to play because I knew that I had such a short run, I had two episodes on the show, so I was like, you know, this is it. This is like the time because I knew what was going to happen to my character. Spoiler alert if, if you haven't seen it. But, um, I, you know, I, I don't really know. I think it's it's honestly all environment. Like when you're in, when you're on the set of Grey's Anatomy and you're sitting on a hospital bed and you're wearing all the, you know, your hospital gown, you have the IVs and, and everything. It's like, it's hard. It's, it's super easy to just get into the character and feel like immersed in that world and then you know when you hop over to high school musical and you're wearing a backpack in a high school with hundreds of background actors that are just acting like high school kids you're like sort of immersed in that universe and it's hard to not just like you know be able to snap into the character when you're wearing all like the wardrobe and, and all that stuff so I don't I don't really know I think they were far enough apart that I was able to like hop around but it was cool to go from uh, drug addict to the uh, drama kid in high school musical um, so you've been balancing music and acting for a long while now, and in, in an ideal world, would you like to keep merging both, or would you like to establish some stronger roots in one of them? Mm. I honestly would love to keep working on both. Um, I think that like there is a way in which you can have that balance. I'm still figuring out how to perfectly have the balance, and it ebbs and flows. Like Sometimes I'm like, okay, I just got to focus on filming for a couple months, and then once that's done, I can work on my music. And then sometimes I'm writing songs like while I'm on set filming. So I, I'm, I'm not really going to put myself in a box. I'm kind of just going to go with the flow, and I think uh, I love them both, and so whatever happens, happens, and uh, I'll just run with it. We know you look up to likes of Robin Williams, Brian Cranston, and Timothy Chalamet as artists uh, that inspire and affect you. Dead Poets Society is an iconic film that mm. happens to be a favorite of yours. I'm curious, what would be your dream genre, dream cast, and dream director? Mm. Well, it's dream genre, I'd love to do like an indie, like thriller kind of movie. I don't know what that means, but um, I think that like I, I want to try some some crazy stuff and like push the limits of what I think is possible for myself. Um, that would be really fun. Like, um, and then what were the other ones? Yeah, you heard my neck. Spin. Wow. <laughs> I think for Dreamcast, it would have to be like, you know, Timothy Chalamet, Florence Pugh. Um, and uh, I think I think that would be it for me. That'd be, that'd be a solid cast. Obviously there's plenty of other people that I'd love to work with. Um, Bob Odenkirk is, a, I'm a huge fan of Bob Oden, Odenkirk and Brian Cranston, so it'd be cool to like go and do some crazy stuff with him. I mean, you know, Steven Spielberg wouldn't be like the worst director to work with in the world, or like Martin Scorsese, you know, that'd be pretty fun. Um, yeah, any any of those guys, if they're if they're down, I'm down. Yeah, right, I'll hit him up. Okay, so now for your musical self. Usually when an artist releases an album or EP, touring is commonly the usual next step. All things considered and taking into account that the pandemic is still a thing, where and how will we be seeing and listening to more of you during the next couple months? Mm. Well, I, uh, I would love to do a live show as soon as it's safe to do so and possible. Um, ideally, a, a tour would be great, even world tour, who knows? But um, until then, uh, you know, I'm just working on uh, doing what I can in a safe way, like I have a show um, called A Night with Joshua Bassett. That's very fun, and it's me in a live band playing all of my songs. Um, and so for now, you know, we're just finding different ways to 
um, to keep the doing performances and, and uh, putting out music while staying safe. Uh, but you know, as soon as it's possible, it's it's gonna happen. Um, on a looser note, what was your or what is your favorite thing to do outside of work? What other passions are you exploring? Like any hobbies? Mm. My favorite thing to do outside of work is to read um, because. That's just my favorite thing to do, is go to a coffee shop and read all day. Uh, and I also like roller skating. Um, <laughs> and I mean, I really like, I really do like writing and I don't do it enough and I, I wish I did. I've been pretty busy, but I would love to like start reprioritizing writing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm pretty boring in that way. I don't have like too many like secret hobbies. I definitely can't cook. Anyone who knows me knows that I cannot cook. Um, and I honestly couldn't say that I tried to cook, so I can't be mad about it, but anyway, I read and I roller skate and, uh, and I act and sing every other moment. <laughs> That's perfect.